So this is um, a Project Lifesaver unit decomposed. Um, we have a strap, basic strap, and there's a lot of different kind of uh, preparations just to kind of get your sizing right for comfort. There's the uh, screwdriver, which helps you screw the backing on and off. There's the actual FM receiver itself, and it has an identification number. It is unique to each Project Lifesaver member. And um, this is the number that you could quote to uh, 911 when you do report your person missing. They will have it on file if you do not have it. This is just a rubber band that will go around the back and it'll help to kind of give that extra cushion. It'll also help to seal it, uh, making the unit waterproof. Um, my child has gone into the pool many, many, many times, as well as the shower, and we have never, ever had an incident where this did not work due to uh, water. Um, this is the largest part of the unit itself, where the battery will be placed into. And this, of course, is the battery. The battery is a long-lasting battery. It is, I think, up to 60 days. And um, then we have a tester that we will use after it's all assembled and complete to see whether or not the battery was properly inserted. And if it had not been, then we would just remove it and start again. Um, last but not least, we have our magic lube. This is, um, if you don't have any, but it will be supplied to you with the unit. You can easily use Vaseline, it'll work just the same. You should use it to clean it and then use additional to um, make the uh, little creases more um, uh, easier to screw on. First you get your actual FM receiver unit and you make sure that it has, you place the, place it so that the number, your identification number is facing up. Then the battery, you put it so that you could see the positive at the top. And then you take your lubricant and I will put some with the tissue. If it gets too slippery, it will be difficult to manage it. You might actually want to use some uh, surgical gloves or you might want to use even a placemat so that your tabletop doesn't get destroyed. Uh, make sure you use plenty of it. Take your time when you do change your battery. What you don't want happening is to freeze up the back because then you will not be able to screw it back on and off. Um, these sound like a lot of instructions, but when you do them regularly, you will get used to and know what I'm uh, talking about. This is as easy as screwing on any kind of uh, jar or any kind of lid onto any uh, bottom. So again, be, be generous, but not overly generous, but you could just keep reapplying into the creases. You could use a paper towel, it's actually better because it's not as um, fluffy, doesn't have as much lint as the tissue. Or you could even use your hands if you don't mind that kind of feeling. Now this part is a little bit trickier. This elastic is quite tight. You wanna get it right where the lip is. Okay, um, be careful, these are quite pokey and quite sticky. You might need to do this a few times, but just kind of be patient with it. Um, and again, just do take your time. It's easy enough. I've done it many times, and even after many times, I do find it a little bit more difficult, but this is the hardest part of the whole ch battery change. And there, it stretches enough. And just make sure it's right down to the, where the lip is, right at the, right at the bottom. What I like to do is put a little bit more lubricant after that so that the elastic is also lubricated. So now here's a little, another tricky part, but not impossible. Just place the lid on top. Make sure that the, um, it is straight because if it's not, you're gonna have difficulty unscrewing it match up the four prongs to the back like that so there's four here and four grooves so just match those up and like any other screw 
action, you would do it clockwise. And here it is. Okay. I take and take your time doing this because you do you do want to feel that it is aligned properly. Slowly. You can start to see it closing and you can start to see a little bit of that black elastic. As you screw, you should see little or no uh, sign of that little black elastic band. It's not quite flush. There is a little bit of elevation, but you know that you've done it right when you see little of that black band. What you might want to do from here is just unscrew it so that you know you've done it right because you don't want to have it screwed for the next 60 days only to find out that you've done something wrong because if it doesn't unscrew you might want to call the supplier and advise them and they will send you a brand new package um, I believe uh, according to your own contract I don't know what the stipulations of your own personal contract might be but it should be free of charge a brand new one so again, you can unscrew it to know that you've done it right, and then tighten it up. Tighten it up fairly, fairly tight, like you would tighten up a lid that you don't want a liquid to fall out of. That's how you would do it. What I do before you put it on your um, uh, wrist or the person's wrist is I test it because for as many times as I've done this, I've never really done it right the first time. So what I do is I, align, I make sure that it's in the proper um, position. So that means that if I've got to clip it on this way, that the, it has to go on a certain way like that. So that means it has to go on like this, okay? That means that I've got to position it so that it feed the um, strap in through this way. What you can do, it's not that hard, but if you find it difficult to feed it through, you could actually just snip it in a triangle and it'll go through even better if you find it hard, but it's not that hard. So just pull through one end and out the other and it should cover your back like that. And then you just put it on your uh, family member's wrist and you've see which perforation is most comfortable for them. That, that's about right, that kind of looseness. Somebody might want it tighter than that. I don't see why they would, but if they do, just ask them if they're able to make that judgment. Otherwise, I would leave at least uh, you maybe your smallest finger underneath that for comfort and movement, and then just snap it closed like any other, like any other snap button that you would find on any article of clothing. Um, I don't usually do this with one hand, but then what you do from there is you just cut off the excess. To ensure that you've placed the battery correctly, take your tester, like this one, and just place it on top. And you can see it flashing a few times. I usually like to see it at least three times to know that it's flashing. The faster it flashes, you know that the battery is fairly new. When you see the flash slow down, you know that you're coming to the end of that battery power. So that might be a little bit of an indication. What I like to do is just take the tester itself and put a little shoelace on it or some kind of keychain so that you don't lose it, so that you can grab and go and uh, whatever works for you. The tester itself also has a battery in it. Um, so if you, test it and see that it doesn't flash it could be that this battery needs to be replaced as well so just inquire with the supplier um, about the battery change on this uh, tester as well if you have a coat over the unit and you want to uh, test the flash it'll actually flash as well so any barrier any cloth barrier paper barrier it'll work as well I often this happens in the morning before my son leaves for school he's got his gloves his coat and before, we, before he uh, leaves for the day, I will go through all layers of clothing and test that it does work.